until lunchtime, so 12 o'clock tomorrow. And then in, mo in the mornings, most mornings, um, I'll do an hour, hour and a half of training um, just to try and keep myself as good as possible. And, and, and the, the, I suppose the main reason for that is that I want to have a lot of energy for my kids. I don't just want to be a fat ex-sportsman that sits on his backside and goes, oh, come on the trampoline with me. And I'm going, oh, no, I'd rather not. Come for a swim. <laughs> no, I'd rather not. I want to have that yeah. energy to be able to spend so much time and quality time with my kids because I, was, I wasn't I was able to do that when I was playing. I was mm. totally focused and driven in, in, in a bubble. What are the mental benefits? Uh, there's a lot of talk. Actually, cricket and golf are right at the forefront of this as well with mental health. There's a lot of... out talking from people, ex-cricketers, ex-golfers are battling with the mental issues when they stop playing. In terms of the environment we're in now, it's quite dangerous for folks. It's easy to take the foot mm. off the gas. What, mm. are the, what are the positive impacts for you in eating and training properly? How much of an impact do you think it has on your mental well-being? Um, I think, first of all, it helps your immune system. I think it keeps your immune system up. I think it keeps your, the, the, um, the insights, it keeps them working and when you are working your mind works and i've always tried to keep my mind busy too so i've got a load of stuff that goes on uh, at all times of the day which is which keeps me uh, engrossed in making sure that i have something to do i never sit around bored but i don't want to be tired if i walk up a flight of stairs mm. i want to be able to walk up a flight of stairs and go sure i feel great if I'm sprinting after Dylan playing it in the garden, I don't want to run once down the garden and go, oh, I don't want to yeah. play anymore. <laughs> I want to spend half an hour with the dude playing with him because these are the most valuable, valuable times. I should be on an aeroplane every single day at mm. the moment. I should be in India covering the Indian Premier League and I would be on an aeroplane every single day and I wouldn't be with my kids. Mm. And I wouldn't be, I, I've never, I haven't experienced April in this country for I don't know how many years. 12 years, I don't think. So to be having the weather that we've got here, to go on a bike round around the a bike round this afternoon around the club with Dylan, uh, to be able to play with the kids, it, it, it's it's been amazing for us personally. I know that there's a lot of people that it hasn't been amazing for, and, I'm, uh, and 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 please don't get me wrong when I say that it's been amazing for us as a family to have a, just the four of us together because anybody who follows anything I do knows that we travel a lot and, and I have to travel for work just like you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough time. Um, and I'm sure everyone understands, obviously, your understanding of the bigger picture with it all. Yeah. Um, I have a few questions just on golf just to finish. Um, first of all, um, we got a great book recommendation from Stephen Brown. It is actually one dies past it into when it was this one. It's the, uh, the Chimp Paradox, which is Dr. Steve Peters. It's a really big book. Is there any great sports books that you'd recommend for folks to have a read of? That book, um, that whole uh, Chimp Paradox is something that I lived by my whole career. Oh, wow. Okay. Understanding, understanding the guy on your shoulder. And it's something that I worked on my whole career and, and accepting that, that part of your brain that's trying to emotionally look after you, you've got to logically park it to one side and not fight it. And so a lot of my success came from the ability of being able to park emotion and think about logic. And I think that's what that book goes into. But I mean, at the moment, I'm reading a lot into the illegal wildlife trade. I've been a campaigner for wildlife for since 2013. I've been, everybody knows how passionate I am about yeah. saving animals and, and, and particularly the rhino. And so for me, I've been reading a hell of a lot about the illegal wildlife trade, the uh, where this coronavirus came from, uh, what happened and how it mutated and, and, and what's happening in China and being having a lot of friends on the front line in Africa and fighting against the poaching uh, syndicates there. You, you speak to them and you speak to them before yeah. this and you speak to them in the middle of this. And this affects so many people. Um, my friends have had people that have been killed fighting uh, to save the animals that are being killed. And how it affects not just the people that go out in the day. It's these guys are going out in the morning saying goodbye to the young children, not knowing if daddy's coming home at night. Yeah. And these guys used, used to be, used to be conservationists and are now soldiers and they in the battlefields. I mean, we're there enjoying the most beautiful, luxurious existence in say the Sabi Sands on the Kruger National Park and thinking, oh, this is all beautiful. But behind the scenes, there's a war that's taking place trying to save the animals 
mm. that are being illegally shipped off to the east yeah. um, and these wet markets. And so I'm not reading anything but um, all the um, information to try and gain a greater understanding as to the cultures in that part of the world and to try and understand how and where we can make more of a significant difference uh, during this time and after it. Uh, Kev, just remind folks who, who maybe want to know more about that, about the website they should go to uh, for your one with the rhinos. Oh, we, I've got a brand called Al Sarai, and um, we support Care for Wild in South Africa. Care for Wild is an animal sanctuary, a rhino rehabilitation sanctuary that looks after orphaned rhinos. It's a sanctuary where they've got, unfortunately, quite a few orphaned rhinos where a lady looks after them. She's got her own army that looks after her because she's looking after these animals that are so desperate and uh, as desperate as they are there's people in and around where she lives the farm that they live that are desperate to get in there and kill these animals to get their horn the horn a rhino horn is valued at about 65 to 85 thousand us dollars a kilogram wow. it's the most expensive commodity uh, more expensive than gold platinum you name it rhino horn and it's basically fingernail and i know i've, I've gone off at a tangent here you, no, we weren't mate, supposed to go talking about this but no, no, it's that's what i'm reading cause. about it's an amazing cause and it's one that's supported by uh, the wentworth club as well in terms of uh, and mm. we all do as your friends um can we love to see the work you're doing please keep it up mate Thanks, uh, I, i'm going to turn you back to golf before you let you go because you know you've got to help get them to bed i've got to get mine to bed as well <laughs> um there's some news rory mcelroy uh, actually came out and has just said that if they do go ahead and play the Ryder Cup, which is the plan, it will be behind closed doors. Uh, and he was asked on his thoughts on that. And he said, the Ryder Cup, everything about the Ryder Cup is about playing in front of those fans, fans and the atmosphere. Mm. And he would be for it being played next year. Now, what do you feel about that as a golf fan? A lot of people have been speaking out about, give us something to watch. You know, we, want, we yeah. know they're going to start playing golf in America soon on the PGA Tour. Um, give us something to watch. What would be your take on that? Yeah, I know the players are desperate to play. Um, they're chomping at the bit to play because as a sportsman and some of the guys, I mean, Rory's in the prime and these guys are wanting to play. I think we're going to see some very fit sportsmen when they come back to play, whether it be cricketers, whether it be golfers. I think next year's Tour de France is going to be the biggest and most star-studded lineup that the Tour mm. de France has ever seen from McElroy to Poulter yeah. to <laughs> Bowden Barrett, the All Black. I'll be nipping in the... In, in, in and around the back of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Willett, I see Westwood. Westwood's going. Oh, yeah. Crazy Everyone's on it, mate. Training. Everyone's on it now. I, mean, I only bought one because I, I felt like I had massive, massive phone. I know. I massively <laughs> missing out. <laughs> Everyone's missing out. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, that's been, that has been fantastic. Now, to get back to the Ryder Cup, I agree with Rory. The Ryder Cup should be played in front of the fans. I think what makes that tournament so special is the camaraderie between the players, amongst the players. I watched an interview with Rory the other day where he said some of his most uh, fun days uh, in golf have come from Ryder Cup experiences. And um, I don't mind. They can go and play the Genesis Open or whoever they want to go and play at on television with no crowd. And I will sit here and I will watch every shot and listen to you guys, mm -hmm. uh, listen to every single thing that you say because I love golf so much. But the Ryder Cup is different. I don't think they need five days or six days of, of that tournament. Let them go and play another tournament behind closed doors. And, um, the Ryder Cup means too much to both sets of fans to just sit around and watch it on TV. It won't be the same. So I'm with Rory on that one. Nice stuff. Thanks, mate. Uh, you're a proud member of the Wentworth Club. With just a couple yeah. of questions on that to finish. Your favourite hole at Wentworth and why? My favourite hole at Wentworth... Uh, Oh, man, there's so many. Which course? The West any? will go. Well, yeah, actually, you can go any course. But but actually, if, just because there's some folks watching you don't know, maybe don't know the other two uh, in the Edinburgh or the East or the South and the East, uh, which would be your favourite on the West and which one overall? Oh, goodness, my favourite my favorite on the West. Um, one's great because I can always get there in two and it's a par five for us. It's a it's par four for the pros. It's not a par five. See, mate, come on, you're better than that. <laughs> You're better than that. It's a par four, mate. It's, it's a drive a along which four. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Don't okay, if it's a par four, then I'm scrapping one. One's gone. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's historic. There's a picture. You can paint a picture on one, but she's gone. Um, I find three 
incredibly difficult. That is a very long par four. It is. That is a long par four. So three is not getting a run. I love four down the hill, five the par three. Um, but then just a couple by the house. Uh, they, I mean, yeah, they're just there's a loop here on the back nine. That's absolutely beautiful. Uh, there's everything about it. I mean, the changes have been so so, so special. It took I know a while to get it. there, didn't it? But they just yeah. they hit the sweet spot with it, and it's just there's not a weak hole out there. When Justin Rose said to me a couple of years ago, "This is the best redesign of a golf course he's ever seen," I was like, "This is special. It must yeah. be special." Yeah. And Rory come back and play. Ernie so proud of it. Uh, Thomas Bjorn talks so fondly of it. You've spoken so fondly of it. I mean, to be able to call this place home and to, to turn up and play here is, we're so lucky, so beautiful. And, the, and you know what's more beautiful about the place is the people. Yeah. There is nothing stuffy about Wentworth. It is the most beautiful, beautiful setup housed in the most wonderful surroundings. And you're always greeted with a smile. And it's just for me, it's home. It's just somewhere that the I just love. nature though, isn't it as well? It's like you've got all that history and mm. pedigree and quality, but at the same time, chilled out, laid back. It's a place to go and have fun, place of yeah. sport, have a good and, time with friends. And, and that's not always the case in our sport, unfortunately. And, and, and with your kids as well. So we can go up there, we can cycle around and Dylan can just hop in and go and pick something up out of the clubhouse. And um, you can, you can not be frowned upon and, there's just, there's so many things. And I know this is the Wentworth Instagram page, so I can say what I want about Wentworth, but yeah. it's, it is, it really is special. And, and, and it is, it's a, it's a sweet, sweet spot for the whole family, not just for the golfing dude that wants to get away from his family and go and play golf for the whole family. It is incredibly special. Well said, mate. We'll leave it there. KP, thanks for your time. Love to the family, mate. Love to Rosie. And I'll, we'll see you tomorrow on FaceTime. <laughs> I can't believe she came in here. <laughs> Take you know care, mate. Great those... to see you. No worries. Sorry. I was going to say, you know how many of those of you watch and there's an interruption where someone comes in. I was like, this cannot happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Cheers, buddy. mate. Bye, mate. Take care. Take care. Uh, always good to uh, hang out with